It's been a while since we talked about Daredevil, and I had this like Sophie's Choice where I was like, hey, let's do one of those old Marvel stories where we talk about like the first Daredevil ever. Mm -hmm. And then I started reading the rest of it, and I'm like, let's not do that. <laughs> but we can talk about Daredevil Man Without Fear from Frank Miller and John Amity Jr. Oh. And through the lens of the first story of Daredevil from Stan Lee and Bill Everett. Hmm. Because it's basically just doing this, but through Frank Miller's lens. So oh. Frank just took it and twisted it. Oh yeah, big time, big time. Well now Frank, of course, has a history with Daredevil because Frank wrote arguably not just the best Daredevil story ever, but one of the best Marvel comics ever in Daredevil Born Again, 86, did that. Also had a stint on Daredevil for a while and loved that character, the way that Frank Miller approached the character. Uh, he had originally, he had done some spectacular Spider-Man stories mm -hmm. and Daredevil appears in them and he's like, ooh, I like this guy. Probably because he wasn't the mainstream hero. Right. And he's like, oh, he's off the beaten path, you know? Well, he lives the shadows. Yeah. He's up to no good, he's, even though he, he gets is. down and dirty and punching people and stuff. Those are all true, but the fact is, the reason is because no one cared about Daredevil, and so Frank could have like as much influence as possible mm. over that character. Like Frank Miller couldn't like, go like, I'm gonna give you Frank Miller Spider-Man. Enough people go, no. <laughs> like people <laughs> go, I nope, I'm sorry. You cannot have that. And eventually it would just morph into something that looks like everything right. from Spider-Man. It's just right. like, oh. With Daredevil, it's like, oh, no one has an opinion about Daredevil. It's fine. Do whatever you want. And when and when I say no, it goes from like here to like, whoa. Yeah. That's why like every time Anyone asks, like, oh, what run should I read on Daredevil? Uh, any of them. Because they're all good. Mm. Because no one cares about Daredevil <laughs> at the executive level. So it's maximum creative freedom. Exactly. It's right. great because he's a mainstream hero, but also never reaches the sales heights that make him a character that editorial has to care about. Mm -hmm. They're and just therefore like, control yes, and because limit. That, it's why mm. Amazing Spider-Man will never be a good book. <laughs> because it's too high profile and too many cooks in the kitchen too many cooks in the kitchen too much in, too much control too many people want to make sure it stays safe right and remains milk toast <laughs> and when you want everyone to buy it you nobody know, will right I think so <laughs> honestly well that's why Amazing Spider-Man is not always the number one for, book for Marvel like if it was great and if it always worked then it would be the number one but Daredevil always remained kind of like a second stringer a B-list superhero if you will mm -hmm. The first appearance of Daredevil, of course, in Daredevil number one from Stanley and Bill Everett, the cover shows you a recreation of the cover of Amazing Spider-Man number one. And it goes, remember this? Well, this is just as exciting. <laughs> and I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> no, no, it's like, it's like a treatment. Yeah, don't try to sell me on this by telling me it's like that. Come on. On the cover. Doesn't everyone like that? It's like Spider-Man, but blind. Yeah, <laughs> except it's not at all, at all. It doesn't look like it, it doesn't act like it. And you can kind of feel Stan creating the Marvel machine. We're at 64 and he's just kind of like, he's doing this, he's mm -hmm. churning them out. I love Daredevil and I think that Bill Everett really elevates the work because it's unlike any other Marvel comic on the stands. Bill Everett's a character we never really talk about in terms of art. But I think that Everett's approach to the character is much more realistic and more contemporary of its time. Mm. You know, Ditko and Kirby were doing like crazy shit, you know? Everett was giving you something pretty contemporary and modern. Okay. Uh, you know, it wasn't breaking the mold. What but it wasn't time was this? 64. Okay. We're off to the races in the beginning with the origin of Daredevil. We see his suit, which is yellow now. It's horrible. See, yeah. I, I hate it. I always hated it. As a, you can as tell a, kid, a blind man designed it. I, I never liked the yellow suit. There are a lot of people who do like the yellow suit, and we're getting the yellow suit in the MCU now. I mean, there's yellow and red. There's, there's a little red bit of red. Yeah. And, and it's distracting how a distracting amount of yellow. Uh, it is, yeah, yeah. I don't like it myself. But again, six issues later, red. Right. And it's iconic. It goes from being, eh. And I, I think, I would, I would argue that if Daredevil had debuted with the red, he might have taken off faster. Mm. Yeah, but, I mean, six issues is like, not a lot of time to completely change. To completely like, radically oh, shift oh, the no, this is this is not this working. is not going to work for me. Yeah, no. everyone hates at, it. At what we'll point did it. someone think <laughs> to themselves like, ah, oh, I know, devils, devils are yellow. Right? <laughs> I, I feel like why wasn't it red from the start? <laughs> I don't know. 
Uh, but Frank Miller will fix that in his retcon of Daredevil's origin. Mm. But like, look oh, that, at how so that is explicitly a retcon. It is straight up a retcon. Okay. It, it is a retcon in every respect, and, <laughs> uh, to the point where Frank Miller approached it from the perspective of like, this is going to be the Bible for Daredevil from now on. Mm. And I'm like, you are a hired writer. You get to say that. <laughs> Um, well, I can I say whatever that. I want. I'm Frank Miller. I wrote the fucking Dark Knight Returns. I wrote Daredevil Born Again. I get to tell you that. Yeah, it's the Bible for Daredevil. And guess what? He was right. It is the Bible <laughs> for Daredevil. Like, they do use elements from the Everett Lee story, mm -hmm. but it is very much like a by-the-numbers superhero adventure, you know? Right. It opens with Daredevil just being like, big splash page for Daredevil doing Daredevil-y things. He's jumping. He's already Daredevil. He's, uh, he's already Daredevil. We do a flashback, of course. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like, the fixer is a mob guy in the Marvel Universe or in the Daredevil story who works with Daredevil Matt Murdock's father, Batlin Jack Murdock. Uh, Murdock owes the Fixer. You know, he does work for the Fixer. Oh, like the Fixer, f does he fix fights? He fixes yeah. fights. Okay. That's does why he they call him the Fixer. Okay, good. <laughs> but he also fixes other, like, nefarious deeds. Yeah, like, I'll fix your problems for you yes. with, like, a gun. Right, exactly. Yeah. A couple of goons will come to your house and fix your problem. So... The Fixer and Batlin Jack are entwined. It's ubiquitous among every piece of Daredevil <laughs> media out there. The show, the Ben Affleck movie, all of it. Yeah. And it's just that, like, Batlin Jack Murdock was a fighter who never really met the heights of, like, prize fighting. And so he was always, like, a mid-tier boxer. Right. And his wife left him or died or whatever. What? Those are very different. Yeah. Well, and it depends on which version you go uh, with. No, if she died, she left him. Yeah, well, she yeah, she left all right. But in the main yeah. continuity, Miller would introduce her as a nun who would, like, nebulously be in Matt's life and would never really establish whether she was or wasn't right. his mother. But, yeah, yeah she definitely would, was. There would always be the hint of that. Yes. And then... Uh, and, it, like, oh, I no, I'm everyone's mother. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. And then Matt's like, no, but you are specifically my mom. Like, you gave birth to me. And eventually that would become explicit. Uh, and then Original Sin would retcon that she had postpartum depression and almost killed him, and that's what broke up the marriage. Right. Uh, between Jack mm. and, and Maggie. But, like, that, which I think is really cool, although I do like how much... Maggie's departure, Matt's mother's departure really informs who Matt is. It's just mm. Jack and Matt. And he's just like, I am a bum. I am smart enough to know that I'm not smart enough to do anything else. Mm -hmm. And I want better for my son. And so he instills in him a sense of values on uh, studies and, uh, you know, staying, playing it safe and staying out of fights. Right. Uh, and also, like, taking the high road. Yes. This, of course, would uh, be... Poison for Matt's social life because as a kid who who is barred from physical activity, uh, all the kids in uh, Hell's Kitchen would make fun of him and give him a hard time. And when he declined, they would call him Daredevil. They'd be like, oh, here comes Daredevil who refuses to play stickball with us in the alley or <sighs> refuses to go anywhere or do anything. And it's like, yeah, all right. Ah, uh, it's ironic. Yes, exactly. He's, yeah, what a great nickname that like, kids certainly wouldn't just call him loser. <laughs> right, yeah, I'm, I'm sure they called him much worse, but yeah. Frank will play with it in uh, in, in Man Without Fear. Uh, it's, it's literally one-to-one, -one, but he'll use it to more effective storytelling. Mm. Uh, but, yeah, so Matt feels horrible and alienated by these children, and he's like, fuck them! So he secretly works out and and, and, and trains. <laughs> and becomes the apex of human achievement at his oh. age. You know, like he he hits the bag, he lifts the bar, he does all these things, and and How does, does he his do studies. all this? Oh, okay. Well, because his dad's always out working for the fixer. So Jack's out. Matt trains both to his mind and his body, and the ability to become Daredevil. Right. And his dad pays so little attention to him, he doesn't even realize like he's getting stronger. He's getting jacked. That's right. Yeah. yeah no. Matt wears loose fitting clothes or whatever. <laughs> but uh, right. the, it, oh, he's it, like Superman. Yeah. In the original uh, story. The fixer basically signs Jack up. He's like, look, man, I feel bad. You're a good fighter. You know what you're doing. I'm going to give you a contract, and you're just going to gonna fight for me. You're just going to fight. Mm. No, no fixing. Right. I know, it's, I know it's against my nature. <laughs> you, just, you just fight. And Jack's like, fuck yes. While he gets that contract, Matt goes to help a helpless old blind man crossing the street who is about to get hit by a truck which is carrying radioactive waste. Uh, Matt jumps to his aid, pushes the old man out of the way, and unfortunately gets some of that waste splashed into his eyes. 
That that will blind you. Or they carry it. skulls or something? <laughs> no, big drums. I mean, I know the origin, yeah, but I'm, it's just now occurring to me, like, this is a remarkably restrained origin I in agree. terms of superhero origin. No, it's true, and I, it's like it's less it's less bombastic than a radioactive spider or yeah. cosmic rays or getting hit by a fucking bomb. Yeah, or being hit by lightning and chemicals at the same time. Or coming from That's another planet. One. Oh, I know, yeah, the Flash. I'm fast because I can hit by chemicals and lightning at the same time. Like, oh, Jesus, that's a bad luck. <laughs> yeah. Jack's just like, oh, fuck. But he's not an asshole about it. You know, he's just like, well, I just got to take care of my son. And now he's like, my son is crippled. And as a result, I have to really, like, extra take extra care of him. Yeah. Matt realizes that he, he in the original origin, he's not like, I can see by hitting a thing. And it, right. It's like, no. I have sonar and shit. It's more like, I can hear better. Right. I can smell things farther. Like, my sentences are heightened. Maybe there's something with the radiation. Maybe. Like, right. that's all. Yeah. It's very subdued. But it's just like, no, I am blind. I'm so blind. So everything else picked up like 300%. Right. Uh-huh. But also, how is he able to do all the shit that he can do? Because he was training before. He already knew how to train. He already knew how to like do the flips and stuff. But now he can like... Yeah, but without being able to see, do flips and stuff? I, I mean, know. I am not an expert on what blind people are capable of. Yeah. Well, and, and neither was Stan. <laughs> uh, if you can believe it. And in fact, Stan Lee tells a story about how he was like really kind of concerned when he was making Daredevil. He's like, am I going to piss off blind people? <laughs> like, will people buy it? Like, will people, right. un not, not just with their money, like, will people accept the premise? And what he found out was that the stories were being translated for the blind. Right, into Braille. And the, 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 the blind audience was like, thank you. Yeah. And so he's like, <laughs> all right. It's so funny that he was just like, uh, well, people like this? Well, this look, is this going to be, like, appropriate? Like, well, have you thought of asking a blind person, Stan? I don't know any. <laughs> Why would I ask anyone? Why would I ever do that? <laughs> I'm a writer. Why would I do that? Yeah. I, I create I things create from things. my imagination. <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't let, allow real life to enter okay, that imagination. Yeah. I didn't ask uh, uh, a family of four if they wanted to get superpowers. Yeah, I don't yeah. know anything about space travel, clearly. <laughs> Though we do indicate that he has essentially a spider sense. Where it's oh. like when he's getting near things, and it's very simple. Like when I get near stuff, like a sense goes off, and it is demonstrated through a series of pings. I like, mean, that could be electromagnetic field. Sure. Like he just feels a wave of something, but he he's like walking through a room, and as he's about to like bump into a corner, he hears or feels a ping. Like ping. He's like, oh, and he just redirects. Okay. Like he's able to cross the road, and he feels the ping of a car coming by. You know, somebody else is like, hey, pal, you're blind. You want my help, like, getting you across the street? He's like, little does he know, I could cross the street even easier and better than him. <laughs> because I have my radar sets. I'm like, not even a little bit. There's no way you can cross that street better than him. <laughs> Here's the thing. You'll get your ping when you're almost on top of something. Yeah. yeah. They can see he it can from see it from a mile away. There's going to be a yeah. car coming in about 15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he wouldn't get it in the ping until two seconds later. <laughs> I can see where that, how that evolved into a radar sensor. A where radar like, sensor. I, I see a, uh, he, an he outline. He literally creates a sound wave, and then it goes out and bounces back, and he can see yes. everything. I mean, like, not only that, but like similar. I agree. If you're calling it a ping, no, it's we, like Hunt for Red October. One ping only, please. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, yeah. I wonder if. Maybe Stan did intend that. Maybe he did know what a ping was, and he was like, That would not a, surprise me. It's a sonar sense. I'm not going to explain it he like that. He was in World War II. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Batlin Jack, uh, he is getting ready for his next fight. It's like a big one, and the fixer's like, You fucking idiot. I fixed all the fights that you were in and, like, elevated your status. Yeah. So that you will throw this fight and make me a fortune. Right. And Jack's like, fuck that. I'm going to beat the shit out of this guy because my son is proud of me. Like, I'm going to show him. Right. And uh, so Matt, like, this is, by the way, there's like a big jump cut. Because, like, you know, Matt's getting the fucking, he's got the sonar sense and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then he goes to college and he meets Franklin Foggy Nelson. Oh, my and God. And roommates. Like, we're just jumping right ahead. Right, right. Because it's all a flashback in Daredevil being at the Fixer's office, beating the shit out of his flunkies, and then being like, well, if the Fixer's not here, I guess I'll just wait for him. Right. So then all of them just wait. They're just hanging out like, okay, well, so. Right. Taking long to make that outfit, you know? Like, it's really weird. While we're here, I'll tell the audience my origin story. And he's telling us the audience. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell them. Yeah. yeah, but at the same time, I I'm imagine how after I the goons it. already got beat up. Yeah. 
they're not willing to fight again. No, it's true. They're like, uh, look, if you want to be here, that's fine. Yeah, if you want to wait, that's cool with me. I still have work to do. Exactly. <laughs> I got to clean. But we skip ahead to like, you know, Foggy and Matt are at the fight. And, you know, he's just like, my boy is here. He's watching. Well, at least he's trying to watch me fight. You know, <laughs> he's listening he's to listening me fight. He's listening to me fight. And I, I don't want to let him down. So he proves that he can win by kicking the shit out of this guy. And like, I love the death of Batlin Jack Murdock in the original comic. He's walking with the strut of just a complete pimp. <laughs> He's just like, yeah. He goes, I don't care what the fixer does to me, which of course is going to be murdering me, <laughs> but my boy is proud of me and you can't put a price on that. And then they just they just kill him. Yeah. In in a panel that just says crack. Like they shoot him, hit him over the head with a brick, <laughs> however the hell they kill him. But they kill him and the <laughs> we'll cops. We'll figure are like, that out later. Yeah. And the <laughs> cops are like, holy fucking shit. Someone brutally murdered Batlin Jack Murdock. <laughs> Matt graduates college, he starts a firm. Foggy's dad sets them up because I guess he's got money. Oh, I didn't they, know that. They hire Karen Page immediately. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. There's there, we waste no time setting up Matt's entire so history all the and stuff all the characters that you're gonna became know. the foundation that we all know. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not gonna break the promise to my father to like make something of myself and be a lawyer and like you know live a respectable life, but I also have these. I have these fantastic abilities and I can't let them go to waste. So I'll make a costume and he makes it and it's Daredevil. And I'm gonna take the insult those kids hurled at me and own it and become the thing that you know they made fun of me for, for, for not being. Okay. And uh, then he's like, wait a minute, I'm not done with this. I got my suit, which is silly and terrible. I'm gonna throw it away six years later. But I also have like this cane, you know, my, my blind cane. Yeah. And so he changes it so that it can also become like a billy club and like there's like a hinge inside that you can like twist and open and uh, so like hit all of his accoutrements are just established like so when I'm Matt Murdock I can use the cane you know to pretend to be more feeble than I am but when I'm Daredevil I can then use it to great effect and I can always have a weapon on me that's true <laughs> so, so he just made it yeah he just knew how to make that like we cut back and he meets the fixer and he's like I'm gonna kick your ass the fixer's like uh oh and he runs away and then you know but all we need to know is that the fixer dies uh, in, an, in a subway station like he just literally has a heart attack uh, and then keels over when Daredevil's attacking yeah. him yes. when he sees a yellow devil come after him yeah. in the subway well, for some no, reason no. he has a heart attack it's not even that because he sees the yellow devil in his office it's that he hounds the fixer and makes him run several blocks mm. and then in the fear of not being able to escape him does he finally succumb to a heart attack <laughs> right after overexerting himself for like 20 minutes then he has so he heart gives him a heart attack yeah. and he could have caught up to him at any point probably uh -huh. and no, just wanted to fuck with him he, well well, he definitely does fuck with him, but it, it is more of a chase. It's okay. more of a legitimate chase. Yeah, this guy clearly has the ability to outrun fucking Well, you remember, he, the fixer actually ends up getting the drop on Daredevil when Daredevil's, like, cavorting through his office, being like, mm. I've got a costume on, so I'm not sure I'm going to beat you. Uh, you know, they, 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 they just... Right, I don't have to exercise caution or anything. No, exactly, which okay. he doesn't, which allows them to uh, get away from him. Like, they give see. him the slip. It's his hubris. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Fair yeah, enough. Yeah, because Daredevil realized that he needs evidence to put away the fixer for the death oh, of his father. Oh, right. so, like, You're the, the lawyer, man. Him. You should know this. <laughs> yeah. So he like says he has a tape recorder, but like he does it, and while he's like reaching for the fake tape recorder, like they pull the they literally pull the rug out from under him and he falls down. So like it becomes this whole like give and chase. Like he takes off his Daredevil costume, he becomes Matt Murdock, and he's just like smelling for his aftershave or whatever, and then eventually tracks him down. So like but the fixer is like on the run. Right. But Matt does have enough like distance between himself and the fixer in order to like conceivably create an actual you know chase chase yeah uh, they, they even encounter Matt Murdock and they're like well there's only the only guys behind us is this blind guy and that's not obviously Daredevil because <laughs> no one who's blind could you know be Daredevil right so hey where'd that Daredevil guy come from who was that exactly yeah the the fixer dies uh, and then the, the the trigger man who killed Batlin Jack is with the fixer and Daredevil says that the fixer gave him up and then he betrays the fixer posthumously in which he says like, no, I didn't, like, it wasn't all my idea. The fixer hired me to kill Batlin Jack Murdock. And the cops who have been on their way hear that and that's testimony enough for them to put away this guy. So everybody gets to go away uh, you know, to jail or, 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 to death. or to hell. Right. And so, uh, you know, and then, uh, you know, Foggy and Karen are like, oh man, where's, where's Matt? Like poor, that poor helpless blind man just wandering the city. You know, in fact, Karen Page says something like, it's such a shame that that poor, handsome man is so crippled <laughs> because I, I would see myself with him. And Foggy's like, 
Son of a bitch. Damn it. Dudes can't even fucking see and she wants him more than me. It's such bullshit. So we're establishing like what the what the status quo of Daredevil is going to be and they're like, you like this? Huh? Mm -hmm. You know? Matt Murdock, uh, lawyer by day, working with Foggy and Karen Page, and by night, uh, you know, an avenging vigilante called the Daredevil. Blind, but uh, not helpless. You like that? <laughs> and, and uses the law? You know, mm. thinks about it? Spider-Man's just like, hey, you're committing a crime, punch. Yeah, bye. Uh, at what point did he use the law in this, other than getting that guy to confess something? That. That's that, the that's only it. thing. It's more yeah. than Spider-Man does. Which we're just getting started. He leaves it webbed up for the police. What do they What do they have? <laughs> hey, here's three guys who are webbed to a lamppost. What What are you guys doing up there? Let me I get you know. down from there. Spider-Man <laughs> attacked me and webbed me to this lamppost. Hey, oh, wait, there's a well, note pinned right. on you that Jameson, says... Jameson's right. There's a note pinned on there that says you mugged some old yeah. lady. Yeah. Courtesy of your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Good enough for me. That's a legally binding document. You're going to jail. Well, Spider-Man says it. I assume he's not here to confirm that he wrote that. Typically not. Some anonymous person who webbed you up said it. That's good enough for the justice system. That's good enough for the New York justice system. Simple, truncated, mm. but direct, and I think economical. It tells you everything you need to know about who Daredevil is as a person mm -hmm. and a character. Here's this rogues, well, not his rogues gallery, but certainly a supporting cast. Yep. Foggy and Karen, moving on. Yep. Right. Karen and Karen thinks he's cute. Yes, yes. That's is that the love interest? Yes. We'll find out. Lois Lane was introduced in the first Superman. So, you know. Yeah. There's a history there. Yeah. With Daredevil, the man without fear, this is a lot more, you know, obviously contemporary, but also interesting because the story goes that uh, Frank Miller in the 80s was writing a movie for Daredevil. I don't even think he had hmm. a reason to do it, but he was certainly working in the Hollywood system, and so he had every reason to suspect they would adapt it since they had adapted The Punisher to middling success. Mm -hmm. uh, when I say that, of course, I mean abject failure. But he was writing a Daredevil movie, and John Amity Jr., who was an artist who was up and coming at that time and uh, was looking for a vehicle to get something going, uh, he calls up Frank Miller because, of course, Romita Jr. and Frank Miller are like, uh, you know, two peas in the pod. They, you know, they, they work really well together. They They're chums. Together. They are chums, and not only that, but like Romita's style really lends itself to Miller's work, and we've seen a couple of those collaborations before on this couch. But uh, Romita goes to Frank, and he's like, I want to make a lot of money on <laughs> a comic book, and I think you and I are the kind of people who can do that. We should do like a Wolverine story. Because like Frank Miller, of course, instrumental in Claremont and right. Miller's Wolverine solo series. So like there's a history there and in the late 80s, the collector's market and the comic book market are booming. And so as a result, like a Ramita Jr., Frank Miller, Wolverine miniseries would go a long way. Miller protests and says something to the effect of like, there's already like three in the works. Mm. Like he's overdone. Why would I? Right. And I think it's also like Miller's like, I've already said everything I want to say about Wolverine. Right, I got nowhere left to go. I also don't want to be compared to my like to that work, mm. uh, but he's like, you know who I'd like to play with is Daredevil, and I have this pitch that I was working on for a movie that I can adapt. Yeah. Miller's like, we can make an original graphic novel about Daredevil, a character that I love and would love to say more about. Of course, Miller also invented characters like Elektra and introduced her mythology into the Daredevil world. Uh, to much success and mm. adoration, right? Uh, and also killed her. So I feel like, you know, he takes every chance he can to insert a, an Electra story in there. He also famously wrote the "What If Electra Had Lived" story from "What If." He had no business doing that, but he's like, "Well, what if uh, I hadn't killed her?" Right. Well, it's like, who else <laughs> better to write it than the person who did it? Yeah, and I think Miller was like. I'm the only one who should be writing about Elektra. Like, I created her, I killed her. If anyone's gonna do anything, it's me. And I then, brought her into this world and I can take her out of it. And Marvel's and like- And bring her back. And then put her back into it because Marvel's gonna do it. And Marvel was like, we're doing that book whether you're doing it or not. You know, so it's like, you might as well write our crappy what if comic. Uh, which, of course, he does. And, uh, you know, it's silly. Uh, well, maybe we'll talk about that someday. I mm. doubt it, though. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, so they uh, sought to make this original graphic novel, which I think was gonna be like 80 pages or 66 pages or something like that. And then it ended up being like 118 or something like that. It ended up being like 130 pages long 
opus, which Marvel had no interest in publishing. <laughs> uh, they were going to make it. They, they were like, this is going to make money. But we ain't publishing like a hundred plus page graphic novel. That ain't what we do. No, we're going to break it up into a mini series and sell the shit out of that, <laughs> which they did. Now, when they were working on it, like they had all these great ideas. And of course, like it's basically just year one, but for Daredevil. Okay. It's right. Frank Miller readapting it, Daredevil's origin story. But the way that Frank looked at it, it was more like Daredevil year one through seven. <laughs> ah. Because it is not just the first year of Daredevil. It's also Matt Murdock's origins and his ascension to college. And then, like, we don't even see... Daredevil's not in this book. It's all about Matt becoming Daredevil. Mm. This is dope. It's not born again, but it is distinctively Frank Miller for all the reasons people like Frank Miller. Mm -hmm. And Ramita Jr. was best suited to demonstrate that because he was hungry and really likes working with Frank Miller and really wanted to sell the story. And I think that Ramita has a style that is divisive, <laughs> but I think that it's at its apex here. Mm. Okay. So they adapt this original concept that was just a retelling of Daredevil's origin. They work on it. They expound on it. They add all this extra shit. They add an entire segment that's just about Elektra because of course we are. Yeah. And then uh, when Ramita started drawing it, they were like, okay, let's get it going. We need like, we need Frank to fill in the words and script it. And he disappeared because he was what? writing RoboCop 2. <laughs> oh, well. And so he just disappeared for a year. A year? It a took year. him a year to write RoboCop 2? You know, that's, that was the thing that like, I scripts was... Scripts written in like a couple days I, I would assume that Frank, RoboCop 2 took like a couple of days. And a then couple he of days and a couple of bags of Coke. Yeah, yeah. and then the, he spent the rest of the 362 days of the year just kind of like being high and, <laughs> you know, doing whatever he wants to do. <laughs> At least RoboCop 2 is better than RoboCop 3. Yeah, that's very true. After all of the RoboCop 2 bullshit... Frank returns, they finish it up, they make it into a miniseries, and by the time this 1988 pitch comes together, it's 1993. And <laughs> here it is! <laughs> Jeez. Five years of the making. Yup! <laughs> Which, you know, it's cool. Is it, uh, it's not in continuity, right? It's a standalone so, thing? It was or, not, okay, so... Doesn't it need to it's be It's a Marvel alone? comic, so it has to be in continuity. I see. It is billed as a... Kind of like retelling of his origin. So would you call it like a companion to the original? I'd say it 100% is a companion to the original and an enhancement of the original. Right. Like it is it is expounding on it. It deepens it. It adds more. It does take away from it as well. <laughs> you know, like Daredevil fights the fix. And in, and in Daredevil Yellow, which is an out of continuity re-adaptation of the origin of Daredevil, which we did cover on the show, uh, Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale just basically retell the origin of Daredevil, but in a kind of like fun rose-tinted glasses kind of way. Mm -hmm. Like, he wears the yellow suit. He does beat the Fixer in the costume. In this, he beats the Fixer. There is no Daredevil costume. Oh. Right. Like, it is a... It is Matt Murdock It is a it. Matt Murdock, down in the dirt, quintessentially New York-feeling, hard-boiled comic book that is everything that Frank wanted to do with Daredevil, but maybe wasn't able to or is finally able to thanks to the clout that is Frank Miller. Mm -hmm. It's almost like when Stan created Daredevil, he had this like archetype for a character, yeah. and then Frank was like, "No, that's not what life was like in New York at that time. This is what it would have well, been like." He takes it, yeah. I mean, like he, I think it's a perfect marriage of both. Where he's like, "Sure, sure, Stan." They just yelled Daredevil at him. They didn't throw rocks at him or anything. Like, no, they definitely <laughs> did. Like, it's more visceral. Yeah, right. but it's it doesn't. Pretty. I don't think it hurts the original origin at all, and I think that like. They do it with Spider-Man all the time. They did it with Fantastic Four. Like they've they've retold the origin and kind of updated it a little bit. Yeah. Right. You know, but if you stray too far, you know, you're in kind of like sacrilege territory. And this right. com this is like a companion piece. Yes. Where like it's like two different people remembering the same event. Yeah, it is kind of like that. Yeah. 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 But it, this one also answers questions that were never posed. <laughs> we never saw Matt when he was a kid. With this, it's like, well, now it's '93 or '88, and we can just get away with an entire goddamn series about Daredevil where he only appears on the fucking cover. Uh, excuse yeah, me, we'll be having a, a Daredevil in your uh, 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 Daredevil book, uh, will you? And I can tell you that I'll have technically he does Daredevil. Appear. Yeah, he is a Daredevil. In the book. Yeah. Daredevil the character. Right. It's another thing. But a Daredevil? Sure. Sure. 
And uh, they definitely were like, this is the Bible for Daredevil to the point where it is absolutely what they used in the show. Mm. There are key moments from this that are just like on the screen in the show. And I'm like, wow, you just <laughs> did the book. That's really cool. <laughs> I mean, if it's that good. Yeah. Well, and the show was great. Well, you'd think that. You'd think like just because it was really good in the comic, they would just do it on screen. But you'd find that's rarely the case. Th this opens with Matt just kind of like on the fire escape, being a kid, but living in Hell's Kitchen, living as Matt Murdock. He's the son of a prize fighter who's past his prime, who has no job. He's a enforcer for the fixer and also like boxes. Life is not great <laughs> he, but he's a good kid he stays out of trouble but he doesn't really stay out of trouble he just uh, he just knows to obscure his identity <laughs> you know he's there's a smart kid he's a smart kid that's right there's like these street kids smart. on the street there's this cop that comes up to them and gives them a hard time because they turned on the fire hydrant to like play in it he's like this is city property kids you, you know somebody's got to pay for this why can't you all be good like that little murdoch boy and then murdoch shows up wearing a ski mask and steals his billy club and runs away and jumps on a skateboard. Already and at it at seven years old or whatever. Yeah, however old. Daredevil stuff. And now the ten. cop's like, well, my billy club's gone. I guess I have to shoot you kids. Yeah, no no gun on him. I guess we're setting this in a weird time. With Matt, of course, obviously, he's svelter. He's younger. He's able to evade the cop and goes to his secret hiding place, which is the gym. The old boxer's gym. Because no one goes there. It's, it's rarely full. So he goes there. <laughs> he hides the billy club in an old locker that he knows nobody uses. And fewer people are using this gym anyway. Goes home, his dad is just drunk and sad because his wife left him. She's gone, died, left him. Eh. Unclear. Unclear, but we know no She's now, dead to them. That's yeah. all that matters. <laughs> By she ain't now, coming back. we know she is the nun. Right. But Jack don't know. Jack is, is, is drunk. His son helps him back into bed. He apologizes to his son for being a slob and for being a loser. And he's just like, no, dad. Good, I, you should. But I worship you. You're great. Yeah. Uh, you know, we go back to the gym where... Uh, the fixer has Matt beaten for not being the enforcer he wants him to be. He's like, you know, I brought half. He's like, half ain't good enough. That's not the full amount. Yeah, you He's gotta like, beat them more. Right, but it's like you can't get blood from a stone, man. Like that's not fair. <laughs> that's your I'll, job. I'll, I'll show you what you can get blood from, though. Exactly, your face. Uh, so Batlin Jack has like two lives like Matt will one day where he's mm. like he's a boxer by day and an enforcer by night. Like he's a he's a champion and a thug. You know, he refuses to, to, to do the enforcers, and they're like, you don't understand. Like, you think we'll only kill you, mm -hmm. but you have a son. What right. do you think is going to happen to him? I'm not saying we'll kill him, but he's not going to survive without you. He's not going to yeah. be taken care of by anybody if you're gone. You see what I'm saying? And then he does become the enforcer. And then that's what brings him to that point. Oh, I see. But uh, then sense. he, of course, he sits his son down. He's like, don't fight. Don't be like me. Mm. You know? And as a result, like, Matt is picked on and given a hard time to. One day... He runs home because the Barkley kid gave him, he pushed him too hard. And Matt slugged him and he just sat down and that was it. He won. Like he did it. And he feels powerful and good. And so Jack hits him. Oh, geez. Yeah. It's hardcore. Yeah. Matt okay. runs off. He's like, my, my dad hit me. What the hell's going on? What's going on? My world's upside down. Yeah. If my dad can do wrong, then anyone can do wrong. Which means there have to be rules in this world in order to allow for like structure and, and, and to, to prevent that kind of wrongdoing. Jeez. So then he just becomes like OCD? Yeah, well, no, he's like, that's when he gets like the, the hard the on justice. for the law and yeah. justice and rules. And it's probably why he's so bent towards Catholicism. Uh, you'll also find if you actually watch like interviews of Frank Miller, like he'll talk about how he made Matt Catholic. Uh, he didn't, but he did <laughs> lean on it harder. Like, it was established that he was Catholic, but Frank's the one who, like, played it up. Okay. You know, like, he's a hypocrite. <laughs> uh, only someone who is Catholic could, like, justify his behavior. Right. Uh, but that's, that's not actually a big... I don't big... have to justify it. I just get forgiveness for it at the end of the week. <laughs> right. <laughs> Matt does some pretty un-Catholic things in this story that never really get played up or paid off and come up later because, you know, way down the line, we'll talk about, like, how... Matt inadvertently, as Daredevil, causes the death of someone. And he's like, holy shit. And it's like, you've done that before. <laughs> this ain't your first rodeo. This ain't your first rodeo, Matt. Like, you've done that a few times before, especially in this, which may or may not even be in canon, so whatever. <laughs> After the beating, or the, it's really just like a one-off. one hit, yeah. It's one hit, 
but I'm not going to justify it. Right. <laughs> I'm it not is, forgiving it. It is child it. abuse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Matt uh, hits the books instead of people, and he's training, and that's when the kid's like, go to his apartment. They're screaming in his window about Daredevil. Come on out. And they're, like, beating on him in the, in the schoolyard. By the way, he's being beaten in public. The girls watch him get beaten, and they're like, you should have fought back. What a weenie you are. Now we've, we're seeing this. We're sowing the seeds of Jeez. Matt needing approval from women, too. Uh. <laughs> but Matt goes to the gym, you know, where he gets his... Like, where, where he feels himself mm -hmm. and he's like and he, every time he hits the bag he's hitting one of those fucking people and he's training and it's like the, it's like the training in this only much less hardcore <laughs> in this he's just beating on a bag he's just right. he's just angry in the comic he trains himself and becomes yeah, Batman flips yeah. and stuff. like there's regiment to it there. yeah <laughs> not no. just pure rage not just rage out in a bag while he is doing that, he is un he, he is being watched by an unseen shadow of a man. Oh, we're adding something. We're adding stick to the story. Oh, and it's not oh, Jack stick. being no. like, oh, it's my son. There's what my have boy. I done? Oh, no. I've got to focus him like a weapon. No. <laughs> uh, so then the old man, the blind man's across the street. Matt pushes him out of the way. Oh, is this stick too? No. I yeah, thought yeah. this was a way to be like, let's yeah, see what he stick can do. Yeah, it. stick yeah. causes the accident. Oh, my God. There's a retcon for you. That would be awesome. Yeah, because stick is blind. So the old man gets pushed out of the way. Matt gets the shit in his eyes. The way in which it is portrayed and described is fantastic. I love the description of how the like sheets feel now that he has this enhancement that he doesn't understand. Like it feels like sandpaper scraping against his skin. He smells the chemicals and disinfectants in the ambulance and thinks he's in a hospital because of how, how strong and enhanced it is. Mm. Everything hurts and, and he wants to die. But then this woman comes to see him. A woman wearing a cross of gold, he under, like he feels. Mm. Uh, and of course, it's his mother, and she leaves, and she's just a mystery. But he feels calmer and stronger after she comes to visit him. Okay, we're setting yeah. that up. Even though we already paid it off, but whatever. Yeah. So Matt goes home. Uh, we find out that like they ain't getting any money from that truck. Because mm. they're like, the reality is, Mr. Murdoch, you're an enforcer for the mob. Do we really need to bring the law into this? Oh, that's the end of that. No oh. money for Matt's injuries. Jeez. Wow. I thought they were I thought it was gonna be like, well, I mean, you actually stepped in front of the truck. Right. It is the really truck your was fault. supposed to hit the blind man. <laughs> You're not really entitled to anything. Exactly. No. It's just it's a shame. Do we need to also put you in jail? You know, because right. we could. Yeah. Look, do you really want to pursue this? Right. Are we pursuing this or are we going home? <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. So we see that like Matt is Matt is just this coiled spring and everybody wants to help him everybody wants to like come to his aid which he does not want and so Stick comes in and he says stop feeling sorry for yourself and get up Stick takes him away to like a dirty dusty basement Yikes. and proceeds to explain that like he's undisciplined and sloppy and emotional undisciplined punk what a what a what a twit <laughs> But uh, he says, <laughs> no discipline. I can help you. And he's like, what kind of help? And he goes, don't ask any questions. Just concentrate on the area we're in. Like, feel the air, feel the wall, but don't touch the wall. Like, know the, where the walls are. And he's like hitting him and he's like smacking him around. And finally, he just like, he's, you know, Matt's got his cane on him and stick like swings and he blocks it. Oh, it's and like he Star goes, Wars. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on. Mm -hmm. Hold up. Stick yeah. was watching him yes. before he went blind. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Stick is blind, yes. right? So Stick's plan was not to train a blind man. No, it, it was, was to train, train a, a fully a sighted, sighted man. person who then quite coincidentally yes. became blind. That's right. So he had to adjust his plan to now train a blind well, person. Well, I mean, like Stick's hours, blind, it's so. It's actually a better plan for Stick because he's like, well, I'm always, I've always been blind. So I know how to train a blind person better than right. a sighted person. Right. Like, so this is even better. Yeah. I mean, it, we find out that... That's fucking weird. It is. It's coincidental, but it's, like, supposed to mirror Matt's dark potential future. You know, like, if... Uh. Stick, is, Stick is a fanatic who believes in his cultish religion. Yeah, but how did he pick him before oh. he went blind? I always assumed that he's like, oh, I heard about this blind kid. No. He got hit with chemicals. That sounds like... No. That's why I like to think that Stick was the blind guy. Right. Like, he set up yeah. the accident. That's the only well, way it makes sense not, to me. But let's say he is for the fun retcon that we've created here that we'll see in the Zdarsky run coming down. But you're welcome, Chip. Well, yeah, but here's your tip. Mm -hmm. Stick and has not to be a be weirdo old... coincidence. No, it is a... it's, it's mystical. The thing is that, oh. like... Stick is a enemy of the hand. The hand is a 
mystical organization that worships a demon they call the beast. Like, Matt was preordained. But why does Stick think that he was watching Matt before he went blind? He, was, he knew he had to train him. Oh, because he read a book or something yeah, about it? he was told uh, or it came to okay. him, but like, Stick, okay. st there are two- This was the boy. There are two pupils that Stick has who came to him okay. that he believed he could train and become part of this like organization or cult of his that would dedicate their lives to defeating and destroying the hand. And one oh, of them okay. is Danny Rand? It most certainly is not. Oh my God. Danny Rand is in Kung, <laughs> Kun Lun dealing with his bullshit. So then Stick trains him with arrows. He's like, all right. And he's like, he's shooting at, you know, cause bows and arrows. You're yeah. blind, you can't fucking shoot it right. if you're blind, but right. like, unless you're enhanced in some way, you know, unless you learn. Stick hits his target, no problem. And he's like, okay, train. And he's just like, you know, Matt shoots, it goes through a window in their dirty basement. Like, it, it's it's not working. Someone on the street screams. Yeah, it hits him in the ankle. Uh, but he just... Uh, he there's just, another superhero I just made. The <laughs> limper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How does Stick hit a bullseye? Is the bullseye paint, like, reflective of sonar in some way? Like, a bullseye is a flat two-dimensional thing that you would not Stick be able to no, sense well, with Stick sonar. set up the bullseye, so yeah. he knows where the bullseye is. If you know where it is in the room and you're good with your senses. Yeah, and he's using, and again, like we're supposed to imply that like there may be something otherworldly about right. this, something enhanced about this. Like is Stick, Stick may not be a superhero thanks to radiation, but he may be more mystically enhanced as a result of his like dedication to his cult. But Matt, is is enhanced well, yes but, yeah because and, of radiation or and, the and Matt or whatever could it is. key off of the sound of where he heard the arrow hit yes but how does he know, know where he, a painted circle is but how would we, stick know the painted circle before there was an arrow there uh, because he put it there in the first place i get and he he, he just memorized his position in space yeah. relative to where he knew the bullseye it was when he walked away actually from i think it. that's it, what a lot of blind people do right but yeah, it's, just, it's very precise. It is very precise. Saying. Look, it's fucking Obi Wan and Luke. It's a it's a training sequence yeah. in which we watch an older mentor train the young protege. Right, and seemingly in, impossible. In seemingly impossible tasks. Yeah. Matt can't do it. Eventually, he does it for like hours and like hurts himself until finally he hits the target and sticks. Like anybody can do it once. Do it again. He hits him, and uh, <laughs> Matt hits the target. He he's, Robin Hood's he the Robin arrow. He Robin Hood's the arrow. And he's exhausted and he goes home and Jack doesn't know what Matt's doing. He just assumes that he's studying like a demon. Like a demon? You get it? Or devil? Yeah, but then we see that like the training isn't just like exercises and Jedi training in the basement. <laughs> like they run across rooftops and they're like, so we see that like Matt's prelation for rooftop running and daredeviling comes from Stick's training right. and using the urban jungle of Manhattan. Did, did, was Stick previously established? No, well, Stick had been previously established before this, but okay. it was a Frank Miller invention. Right, and was child abuse always part of? Yeah, Stick is always a piece of shit. Yeah, okay. Stick's always a, an animal. He sucks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so as I've seen parallels, you know, oh, his yeah. dad hit him, and then he meets this guy, and this guy's hitting him yeah. as like a discipline. Oh, absolutely. Technique. Now Matt is, I mean, like, so his his innocence was lost, and now we're just now we're just in the shit. Yeah. So Jack is training, he's doing his thing, he's running, and he's getting ready for his huge bout at Madison Square Garden. It's all oh. been building to this. The fixer comes to him in a limousine, and he's like, "Okay, here's where I tell you that it's yeah. all horse shit, and you got to throw the fight." We we see round four. He's like just drenched in sweat and blood. He's just he's been taking a beating. And one of like the fixers guys, like he's got his his, his managers and stuff are in the corner, and one of them's like, "Okay, it's time for you to take the fall now." Yeah, why are you still standing? You have to think about your son, man. And he goes, "No, no, no, no. My son is out there in the audience, and he thinks that my that, that his father's a bum. Like, as I told him never to quit, and he's right. I'm going to show him. I'm going to show him what not a bum I am by beating the shit out of another man. That's all I can do. <laughs> like, and that's the thing is like." For Jack, it's like, that's all I know how to be. Right. So I'll be the best damn yeah. boxer that I can, I can be. be. This is my yeah. livelihood. Yeah. yeah. This is how I express myself. <laughs> this is how I will express, like, my, my, my resolve. Yeah. So he beats the guy. Jack walks out the exit in the rain and just goes, I know you're all there. Just get it over with. They beat him near death, and then one of them shoves a pistol in his mouth and just blows his brains out. Oh, wow. <sighs> that is graphic. That's how the first issue ends. So then... Wow. Uh, Matt identifies the body. He has to touch his father, which of course is like cold, and there's nothing mm. there. But also like, oh, I know, I know. So, I, I thank God, <laughs> thank God they shot the back of his head out. Yeah, it's true. Uh, Can a blind person identify a body? I don't know. I think it's more like we know. 
I think they're just telling his son that he's yeah, dead. Yeah, maybe it's like, right. I have to prove it to you legally. This is the body of your father. Right, yeah, exactly. you, need, you, you need to touch it. I'm sorry. Do, do I need to touch it? Or are you a fucking creep? Well, they say that the coroner lets <laughs> Matt touch him. So I maybe see. it's more like he wants to touch him. He needs to right. know. I need to like, see. I can feel his facial features. I need to know he's know dead. Yeah, I need to see him. <laughs> so uh, two of the enforcers that uh, contributed to his death are getting drunk and having a good time. They hear a tapping in an alleyway. It's Matt. He's hiding there. He says, drink up, boys. It'll help with the pain. And like, who wants a beating? Let's go. He <laughs> beats them savagely. And when the cop comes to discover them, he say, they say it was Jack Murdoch back from the dead. The big one, Slade, who, who beat him the most, right. is training. Uh, and then there's Marcello, who laughed as he carved up Murdoch's face. It's just... Here's a couple other guys that were there. How does Matt get his revenge on them? You know, he cuts the lights. Now they're as blind as he is. Uh, he takes out Marcelo immediately. He's bleeding from like these horrible scars in his face. Slade turns and the light comes on over the ring. And mm. Matt's there with a ski mask and a baseball bat. <laughs> and, he's, and he ditches the bat and like is like, come on, bring it on. Uh, nice. Slade faces him. He's this huge, impossible opponent. Of course, it's paralleling who Matt's major opponent will be in the future, of course, Kingpin. So Matt kicks his, like, knee backwards. <laughs> oh, Jesus. He grabs a roll. blood coming out the back of it. I know, it's awesome. He yep. grabs a roll of pennies and fills his fist with it. And nice. Just beats him <laughs> until the Until the, the, until the rapper pops. breaks. Yeah. The Fixer sees the young boy beating on Slade. Fixer gets into his car. Matt gives chase and chases after him. Uh drives the bat through the windshield, cra causes the car to crash, chases the fixer into the ba into the subway. Mm. Uh, fixer takes out his, his revolver and he's just so afraid that his heart gives out and he dies. So that's the same sequence, yeah. but without all like the fun superhero subterfuge of like, Daredevil shows up, he right. changes into Matt Murdock, they see a blind man, eh, we don't yeah, need all that. Yeah, it's way simpler. How about he's scary and he's a fucking psychopath, yeah. he's wearing a ski mask and a baseball bat, and he's like, I'm gonna fucking kill you. Fucking, and fucking he scares someone to death. Yes, yeah. but there's one left and it's Angelo, that's the trigger man. Mm. Does Matt feel any remorse for the guy dying? Is he like, oh shit, he wasn't supposed to die, or is he just like, no. Sucks to be you. He's, no. <laughs> I feel no He guilt. says one left or one remains. Yeah. So he's like so checking him off a list. No. Yeah. Exactly. No, yeah. It's like, I didn't try to kill you or any of those other people, but, but I, don't, I don't have to save you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't feel I bad about heart this. Attack. Yeah. I'm not going to call 911. So uh, Angelo retreats to a brothel. I assume he heard about Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's a couple of guys that are still alive and they're in the hospital and they right. tell this detective, like, Batlin Jack Murdoch came back from the dead, shrank a few feet, and then kicked the <laughs> shit out of us. And he's like, Nah. But if you come back from the dead, you shrink a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, right. I, I would have loved it if that red jacket he was wearing was, was his, his like, dad's jacket. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Or like his, his fighting robe. Something. Yeah. Something where they were like, oh, it's a sign that it's Jack yeah. coming to kill us. Oh, that would be cool. In Daredevil Yellow, he sews his father's like uh, boxing robe into the suit. Like it's why it's yellow and red because that was Jack's oh, colors. Oh, that's cool. It works really well in that story. Yeah. yeah. And this is just a fucking Frank Miller character. <laughs> Angelo is in this brothel. He's surrounded by sex workers, and they're all just like on him. And he's just like, that was crazy. This fucking ski mask guy. And then Matt pops up from behind him. He's like, ah! <laughs> and then That's uh, awesome. the women think that it's a raid. And so they all attack him. Yeah. And so he's like kicking and punching, and he kicks this one woman <gasps> through the window. She falls, and he hears her bones shatter on the pavement. Oh and God! He's like, oh no! I want to think because that this is the crap. origin of Typhoid Mary. Because Typhoid Mary's origin is that she was a sex worker, and during a quagmire of a Daredevil fight, Daredevil accidentally knocks her out the window. So I think this is a retconning of Typhoid Mary, but uh. maybe not. I don't know. Maybe it's paralleling Typhoid Mary's eventual and inevitable uh, origin. But Miller didn't. But know I mean, that's that was... very on the nose. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's. I think this is Miller retconning Typhoid Mary. But. Yeah. And Ascenti invented her. But in any case, uh, Matt feels like, oh shit, like an innocent person was killed on my quest for vengeance. He rips off his mask, goes back to the gym. He calls for Stick. There's no answer. Stick is like, not there. Stick is instead in a like no-tell motel talking to... Also, Stick doesn't care. He's like, so what? There's going to be casualties. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, Stick is like, fuck him. Oh. He's too emotional. He used my training to get revenge on his dead right, father. He gives a shit about. about his father. Yeah. What about no. the hand? What about yeah. the hand? I, I, I was training him to get revenge on the hand. Exactly. <laughs> he hasn't Stupid picked up a asshole. bow in weeks. Yeah. 
no, he's he's failed us. He is useless, and so Stick abandons him. So okay. as a result, because Stick is gone, Matt's like, I guess I'll just keep like training and, and, and learning. And so he he goes to Columbia University. But the Trigger Man got away. Yeah, I guess he did. I or mean, the like Joker. In that old Christmas rhyme. No, yes. I mean, like it's just. Yeah, it, he yes. did, he did get away. That's true. yeah, that's true. But I think he's done with the revenge thing. I think yeah, he learned a valuable lesson. Like, oh, stop I should have been doing that. that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I kind of figured it would come up later. Like that was the one that got away. That no, he's not like one left. Avenge. No, no, he like no. matures kind of. Yeah. So he goes to Columbia. He runs into uh, Franklin Foggy Nelson. Foggy to his friends. Uh, Foggy is harassed by this real douchebag who's named Brad. Ugh. Brad is, of course, like, a, like you know, he's, he's got more money and more influence. He's more, like, popular. And Brad is, like, of course, crossing the line like any good Frank Miller or Stephen King story. You know, where they're, like, borderline serial killers. Right. <laughs> yep. And, uh... Doing things that could kill the person. How yeah. oh, come on? I just ran my car down at him. Yeah, he got yeah. out of the way. In every Frank Miller and Stephen King story, it's like, hey, come on, man. I was just having a little fun. You know, yeah. it's like, you had a switchblade in class. <laughs> You're going to jail. <laughs> so, Don't uh, worry. A, a weird spider will get you out. <laughs> so uh, Brad threatens Foggy while they're in class. And Matt's just like listening in. And then mm. Matt, uh, Matt has a heart to heart with Brad at night <laughs> under the cover of darkness uh, he strips Brad naked and ties him up and leaves him in the quad and uh, tells him if you ever go near Foggy Nelson again you're gonna fucking die and so Brad is like okay I will be nice to Foggy Foggy's my friend now that's the end of that <laughs> who uh, does he think did that to him he doesn't care he's afraid okay. and that's the end of it like <laughs> I mean he's at Columbia University maybe he thinks Spider-Man did it because <laughs> Spider-Man's been operating since he was 15 years old Daredevil was created two years after Spider-Man no references to Spider-Man by the way despite the fact that Frank Miller is very much using a classic Spider-Man villain and in fact in the origin story for like the 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 reinvention of the Kingpin Kingpin was a Spider-Man villain invented as like a silly mob guy yeah uh, he was created by Stan Lee and John Amity Sr. And the idea was that, like, Stan's like, I want to invent this guy. He's called the Kingpin. And every... Kingpin of crime. Kingpin of crime. And every single mob guy, every single mobster or criminal in the comic at that point was, like, thin pencil mustache, nice suit, thin. Hmm. And Ramita was like, ooh, Kingpin. I got this image. And he got these images of this huge fat dude. Hmm. Just a different, unconventional-looking yeah. supervillain. But because Stan was writing it and because eventually that would be who the Kingpin was, Kingpin, you know, he had like a cane that was also like a rocket that like blasted in places and he, you know, he, he hit people with his tummy and like, you know, it's just, <laughs> it didn't quite work. And Frank, Oh yeah, he's a big fat guy. Yeah. So he, he uses his blubber. God. Yeah. So Frank is like, I want to use the Kingpin. Not in this, he will, but like previously when he reinvents Daredevil and makes him a more hard boiled, noir bent you know, vigilante hero. He's like, I want the kingpin, and and, and the spider off is like, fuck it, knock uh, yourselves out. Sure, and go ahead. We don't care. Immediately makes kingpin interesting and fun. Foggy is now friends with Brad, or at least Brad's nice to Foggy. That's <laughs> been taken care of. Kathy, this like cute co-ed of Matt Murdock's, is like, hey, like I'm having a really hard time with this exam coming up, and I don't know. And Matt knows from the heartbeat, like she's a no problem with that exam. <laughs> But, she is uh, lying. She would like a little bit of Matt Murdock. And I do not have time for that, so forget it. He oh, my leaves. God. And, if uh, you wanted to study, I would have been down because, you know, studying is important. Exactly. That's a value. It's a virtue. I, I, but I she carry. lied to me. She lied to me, and she wants to fornicate. No, he has no problem fornicating. <laughs> it's just that he doesn't have time because he's like, he's doing his thing. I got Daredevil. I got important I got Daredevil, Daredevil shit to do. I'm, I'm not quite Daredevil I'm not Daredevil. I'm not Daredevil. I haven't even embraced that name yet. <laughs> I, I have to uh, show more punks that they are not allowed to mess with Foggy. Exactly. <laughs> Foggy falls asleep watching Star Trek. Uh, you know, <laughs> meanwhile, uh, you know, Matt is seduced by the night. You know, like when nighttime comes, he should be asleep. He should be training or, 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 or studying. But but his circadian instead, rhythm's all off because, like, he doesn't know night from day. Exactly. So he, you know, he he goes out and he just like is is, is part of it. Like he he's, just he put proto daredevil. He's proto daredeviling. Like he goes onto the rooftops. He just runs. You know, like a, a wolf howls at the moon and he joins in the celebration. You know, it's like okay, all the Frank sure. Millerisms you like, but yeah. it's like, but it's fun and it's very like, it's very Frank Miller art style. Thanks, John Romita, for like 
hearkening into that. It's really cool. And he can't escape the stick training. No. No, it's like, mm. this is who I am. I've been, I've been beaten savagely by too many father figures in my <laughs> life to make me into this. But while he's running, like, he smells this fragrance and he hears this other person. There's another counterpart out there who is also like hunting the night. He was also like running and, and, and has like some kind of training and she smells incredible and he's, he hears her breath and he feels her footsteps and they're light like a cat. He chases after her, you know, cause he's just, he's got nothing else to do. He's right. not a superhero yet. I'm just going for a, a roof run. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going for a roof run. <laughs> he like almost loses her and then he picks up on her scent or her, her she knows that he's like tracking her. Oh, so he's mm. chasing her. He's chasing her. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And she's she, trying to get away, no, and he won't let no, her get away. No, she's, she's leading she's operating him. independently, and then they oh. both kind of key into each other, and then he pursues her, and then she outruns him, and then lures him in, and then uh, eventually, like, it, it leads into the park, mm -hmm. Central Park, and uh, so he's chasing after her. And as he's chasing, he notices, or at least he picks up on from his radar sense, I guess, that, like, parts of her clothing are starting to be missing. <laughs> like, her shoes are gone, and her pants are gone, and her jumpsuit's gone. <laughs> As he's chasing her, he like he tries to dive over a cab, but it's snowing and he slips on it and he lands. Ooh. And when he lands on the ground, that's when she screams out, help someone, someone is chasing me. <laughs> oh. And he's like, oh shit. And then that's when he catches the panties that are hanging off of a nearby uh, tree branch <laughs> and he hears the police. And so the cops are like, hey, we heard a woman scream, and you're ch you're running like crazy in this park by yourself. Give me some ID. Oh boy. And he's like, okay. Nah. Like I'm under arrest. Here's my ID. <laughs> <laughs> in this case, it's like I can't get you away. You already saw me. Yeah. But uh, while he's being interrogated by the cops, Electra is putting her clothes back on and watching the fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they're like, holy shit! Like there's. This ID says that you're handicapped. It says you can't fucking see. Also, I see no evidence of a woman, so I guess you're fine. Right. And he goes, they're like, hey, what? man. What? Yeah, they're like, hey, man, uh, don't be running around this park at nighttime when you can't see. It's dangerous here. He's like, yes, sir. So then, you know, next day, Matt and Foggy are hanging out. Uh, Foggy starts to cross the street. Matt pulls him back. This sports car pulls up. It's driven by Electra. Matt jumps in the car. <laughs> hey, you uh, tried to get me arrested last night. Uh -huh. That was a good hot. one. <laughs> you so, almost, <laughs> almost got me. This is Electra, like, yeah. and and it's great because like we don't really get a we didn't really get a glimpse of like Electra's formative years in any of the other previous stuff. So it's like here's more Electra. Mm -hmm. uh, but she's driving a convertible in a snowstorm in New York in the right. winter. What a woman. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the interior of her car will be fucked she up doesn't though. Doesn't care. Fuck it. I'm rich. I'm good. Yeah. It's not even my car. Right. <laughs> She's driving 95 in the snow, and she's just screaming and having a great time. Oh, that's and he's the like, daredevil. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she drives it through a guard ramp, off-road, finds a cliff, banks it, and then just barely manages to keep it from tipping over. Mm. She gets out, she's standing on the precipice, and she's like, this is where we belong, on the brink. We're two of a kind. <laughs> And then she jumps We're not so off. different, you He's and He's like, I. lady, I don't know what you're talking about, but, but I, I don't like yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> she jumps off. She lands in a, like, frozen lake. That's how the book ends, by the way. She just Jeez. jumps off the edge. And he's just like, oh, shit. Oh. She's going to die. So she dives in, feet first, breaks through the ice, underwater. Matt jumps in. He follows after. He's trying to find her. Oh, he, does his sense not work that well underwater? Not really, no, it does not work. So he's just like, he's, he's swimming blind. He breaches to the surface. He hears her laughing. She's already made it to the top. She gets in the car. She drives away. Oh Matt goes back God. to the dorm. He is soaked and dying. And I have pneumonia. Yeah, Nelson's like, oh, hey, Matt, how was it? And he's like, I went swimming. And he goes, <laughs> dude, Electra is bad news bears, oh, man. Jeez, dude. Do not mess with her. You know, let me tell you something, man. I knew this dude named Flint who went with Electra for a while. Remember when Flint got hurt skiing? Yeah. Uh, from what I understand, it wasn't the slopes that hurt Flint. <laughs> it was her. Wait, so Foggy knows of Electra? She goes to their school. <laughs> She's a student named Electra. Yeah. Electra Nachos. <laughs> okay. That's, Electra a, wait, Nachos. that's a real name? Yeah. No, it is oh, real. I didn't know that. Yeah. I assumed it was a superhero name. No. <laughs> I mean, it becomes a superhero name, right. but it just so happens to be cool. So he's like, Electra, huh? That's her name? Where does she live, since you seem to know all this stuff? Why would I know that? Because he's Foggy Nelson and he's connected in some uh, I'm the student uh, body president. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know you, but I will. So uh, Matt goes to her estate, mm -hmm. and 
it's surrounded by security because there's a huge hoity-toity party going on at the same time. Matt sneaks in, he breaks in, basically, and he sneaks past security, which, of course, are like, what? This just reminds me of the beginning of True Lies so much. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because there's snow, and he's sneaking in, he's mm-hmm. breaking the water. There's a big water. party going on. Exactly. If only he had a tux underneath. Oh, I know, right? Uh, yeah, and then he could, like, ask her to dance. Uh, but he breaks in, he sneaks in, he finds her room, and smells like her. He's found all of her trophies. She's, it's not creepy at all. Well, I mean, she's the one who's, like, a creep. She drove like a crazy person and jumped into the water. And it's true, and I was her. breaking into her house. Listen, this is the game we play. <laughs> Look, we're she's both, intense, she, I'm intense yeah. back. We're both really she dangerous broke any people. Laws. She broke traffic laws. Well, okay, she didn't do that. Listen, no that personal not, property laws. That does not justify his behavior. They're both <laughs> damaged, yeah. dangerous people. They're people. both insane. Yeah. Yeah, yes. They are insane. <laughs> yes. Uh, so he breaks into her room, he smells her perfume, he's like, okay, and then he... He hears that a dog is coming. He kicks the dog in the throat and beats the crap out of a security guard. Kicks him through a window. With an Uzi, okay? The security guard had an Uzi. It's true. He kicks him through the window, but that window crashes through the enclosed glass where the party is being kept. He falls all the way through. He lands on the piano, which is being played by Electra. She's just entertaining for the party. (laughs) This is such a movie scene. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's and listen, here's the script. It's in the back of this book. <laughs> by Frank Miller. Yeah. They see him, but he's so far up, they don't really recognize him, so they just start firing. Uh, what? Yeah, they just fire Uzis into the into the upstairs, and, a, and he realizes as Every he's good party has a gunfight, okay? Oh, right. Yeah, apparently. I'm sure the guests love all this. <laughs> oh, sure. it's so entertaining! Oh, oh bravo! <laughs> I think... Uh, so, so Matt is running, and as he's running, he realizes that Electra never stopped playing. <laughs> She's played a piano that's been all smashed. Oh, yeah. On it. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's embarrassing, but <laughs> it, it sells the message. You know what? I could tell she's still hitting the right notes. Yes. It's all fucked up, but... Even, even though it's just a mangle of wood and, <laughs> and wires. Strings. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that's he, how cool she is. Exactly. She's unfazed. She's so cool. He does get clipped by uh, at least one or two bullets. Oh, jeez. He just basically wills himself into making it back from, like, I guess the Palisades to the city to Columbia and just like dresses his wounds but it took him a while to like will himself not to fall unconscious right so he goes into the bathroom changes his you know he tears off all his clothes dresses his wound he's like okay he's not gonna black out and that's when he realizes that someone's taking a shower in his bathroom and it's Electra (laughs) and uh a few hours later, Foggy comes home and the door's locked and he's like hey Matt what's going on and he goes I'll be right out Foggy just a minute 20 minutes later (laughs) The door opens and Electra leaves. And Foggy's like, oh. He goes in. The entire dorm is trash. <laughs> From all the circus sex they were having. <laughs> oh, my God. That's an amazing image. And oh, Matt just awesome. sitting there proud of himself on his handiwork with his arms behind his back just going, she is a really very nice girl, Foggy. Foggy. Oh, my God. Don't touch anything in the apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Get me some orange juice. <laughs> he do- By the way, I should point out that he says she's really a very nice girl, which is the exact same line that Superman says about Wonder Woman in All-Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder. Yikes. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, so Elektra, after this like post-coital consummation of her you know, equal, uh, she walks through Times Square, which is not a good idea in the late 80s or 93 when this is being released. Uh, <laughs> but she walks by and she deliberately like, walks by men she knows are up to no good. Thugs, if you will. And yeah. lures them into an alley and there's like a parade of people that like go into the alley after her and then she takes off the big fur coat she's wearing and reveals that she's wearing like practically nothing. And she's like, you aren't frightened, are you? And they're like, oh man, this crazy uptown broad, we're gonna take so much from her. And then she kills them <laughs> with her skills. Yep. And that's it. She just she just straight up murders them in an entire like classic action sequence. So really, the sex with Matt was the precursor. That was the that was play. her warming up. Yes. This is her sex. She used she uses one of the victim or assailant's blood to write "I Heart New York" on the wall for the police when they arrive. Oh, uh, that is psychotic. <laughs> Yeah. Yikes. So uh, then we go to the campus gym where the two of them are just like exploring their acrobatics <laughs> and they're just having a blast. And it's just, she knows this can never last, but they're having a too good a time. Uh, Matt is just living in ecstasy. He's in class. He's just daydreaming about all the fucking crazy ass sex they're having with this chick. And uh, the, the, the professor's like, Mr. Murdoch. And Foggy's like, you should probably answer the professor, Matt. Hey. <laughs> so Matt's asleep and uh, at his dorm alone. And he is awoken by Stick sitting on the foot of the bed with his pulse 
sticking in Matt's throat. And he goes, stay away from Electra. <laughs> that girl is poison. That girl is poison. <laughs> <laughs> so six over two on trainees now. A big time. Oh yeah, no. Well, it's like he trained her for like six months, and then she, she was too nuts, and he's and he's like she's she's evil. Hmm. Like for as far as sticks concerned, right. she's evil. I guess I'll go back to Matt. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think that I think that he trained her first. Oh. And then went to Matt. Okay. He pushes on Matt's throat, knocks him out, and when Matt wakes up, he's not even sure if it was a dream or not. Mm. Hey, uh, yeah, it's probably a dream, though. Ah, fuck it. <laughs> I am college age, and I am with a woman that I absolutely shouldn't be with. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's insane. <laughs> I, I know you're telling me to walk away. Yeah. I'm not gonna. I, I, I can't. I physically can't. I hear what you're saying. I completely do. I hope you're not offended if I do the exact opposite. <laughs> <laughs> so Matt and Electra, they're going, they go on a ski trip together and they're doing dangerous skiing and then they go back to their their their, their cabin on bearskin rugs and have total crazy ass cabin sex <laughs> by fire. This is probably her mountain. <laughs> oh yeah, no, she owns oh, yeah. this place. He tells her he loves her. Uh, her father dies and she leaves and she's like, oh. she runs his company and she takes off and she kisses him goodbye with a force of like, you know, fire and, and hunger and, and knows that she will never be with him again. It's like, that's not true, but it's really cool to, to read. Yes. So then we have a sequence in which we see, like, you know, some this, this mobster, like, doing his thing, and Kingpin shows up and snaps his neck, and he's like, I'm in charge. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're just establishing the Kingpin. Right. And it's like Kingpin year one. Like, we're watching Kingpin rise. <laughs> I like the Kingpin doing that because he's like, I'm my own enforcer. Yes. I don't need a guy. Right. By I'll the way, in the next issue, we immediately establish a guy. Yeah, well, I do have guys. I have guys now. Yeah. Oh, I don't use them, though. No. Yeah. They're just for show. Like, I walk into the middle of, like, a summit conference where there is clearly a leader of the mob, and I walk behind him, and I snap his neck, and I tell you all I'm in charge. And it's like, that's a pretty big show of force. Like, we're also establishing, like, hey, listen, like, we are attracted to distinctive leaders. <laughs> Characters that have, like, a, a physical mm. attribute that you can yeah. key into. Like Nick Fury. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this, this mobster had an eye patch. This mobster is morbidly obese. <laughs> but uh, that's not true. He's actually 98% muscle and 2% body fat. He's just huge. He's just massive. Uh, so then we see, like, we watch his, like, rise to power. And, like, you know, Kingpin is, you know, he's the kingpin of crime. Like, he takes over all his families. He, and he has his fingers in everything. And, you know, drugs, prostitution, gambling, everything. He's got, he is his own private Gestapo. He's got his own people. But he's got this guy named Larks. And Larks is like scary, and you know, he's like that guy from Boondock Saints that like you know is a you know one man army that like has all this bullshit you say about him to establish how scary and obviously like you know formidable he might be. Oh he's yeah, a Temple Guardian. <laughs> I was gonna say like he looks like the uh, the mid '90s Eastern European. Oh yes, enforcer who's just like oh it's like ex Spetsnaz or something uh-huh, like that. One hundred percent. He looks like that guy from Die Hard that like is really be- sad that his brother was killed. Yes. That guy. Like, that's 100% him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matt, meanwhile, at, at, after Electra leaves, he gets his... We don't even see him get his diploma. In the original <laughs> comic, matter. we see the diploma. In this, he just he joins a firm. It's a corporate firm. He goes to Boston, mm. and he works there. He leaves New York behind. He can't... like New York is him, but like after Electra leaves, it's like, what's the point? So he just... Right. He just There's nothing for me there. He just checks out. That's gets the place the where my heart was broken. True. Meanwhile, yeah. Foggy's just like sitting on a couch alone. I'm yeah. Sad. Foggy, uh, he, you know, he, gra- he graduates too. He gets his diploma. In, in the, at the end of the original Daredevil, Matt and Foggy both graduate. And he's like, we should start an law firm. My dad will get us an office. Let's go. <laughs> in this, it's like, Matt is like, bye, Foggy. And just yep. goes Yeah, I gotta to do Boston. some. I gotta do some adventures on my own first. It's not even an adventure. He gives up all of it. He just goes oh. to Boston. Well, I'm just gonna adventure. be a lawyer up there. Yeah, I'm gonna be a lawyer up there. It's, time has passed. Matt's graduated. He went to Harvard as well, and he gets his law degree. And he's he's doing fine. He's working for this corporate bullshit law firm. He's not helping people. He's just helping people make money. <laughs> okay. Uh, and they're gonna send him to New York for business, and he goes, and he's like, okay. Hmm. It still sounds the same, smells the same, same bullies. Everyone's still there. Is he going to stop all... in and see Foggy? He does, yeah, but he doesn't hmm. do it on purpose. Uh, <laughs> so he's walking through Hell's Kitchen. He, he finds himself, he's staying uptown, but he winds up, and he ends up, like, walking, and he ends up in... Uh, oh, yeah. Or he ends up accidentally, in I'm sure. Oh, yeah, exactly. Like Batman accidentally walks into Crime Alley at the beginning of Dark Knight Returns. <laughs> he ends up in, like, the schoolyard, like, where the kids used to call him Daredevil. And suddenly that nickname is ringing in his head over and over and over again. And there's this gang... That's there, 
And they're like, hey, blind man, what's going on, man? We want your money. And he's like, look, you don't want any trouble from me. And they're like, you got a really expensive suit. Like, we're taking it. We're ta Strip down. We're going to embarrass you, too. Like, we're going to take <laughs> everything from you. We're, like, we're going to rape you. I'm like, oh, yeah? Oh, jeez. Okay. Uh, so they attack him, and he just mops the floor with them. And as he's beating on them, the name Daredevil is over and over again. He is taking the revenge that he wanted on these children. Right. Yep. Out on these thugs. I mean, maybe they're the same age. They might even be the same kids. Might be the same kids. Who knows? Yeah, they, maybe that's why they hang out here. Mm -hmm. No, this was our school. All right, well, I'm in it now. I guess I'll go back to the gym. The old place where I used to, like, where I found myself. I guess I'll do this for a living. No, no, no. Well, not for a living. No, he doesn't want to be Daredevil. <laughs> no, I'm just, no. He's, I'm finding I, all my old haunts. I'm nostalgic. I'm reminiscing. I so he see. goes back to the gym, which has been boarded up. He breaks in. It's all, it, it's all like, in disarray, but it's still a gym. And, uh, yeah, like no one bought it and renovated it. No, and the it's smells are all still there. Except for this other scent. The scent of a young girl that's there. Mm. Who pulls out a slingshot, she fires at him and he catches it. He says, hey, I'm not going to hurt you. It's okay. Her name is Mickey. And Mickey, this young girl, like 12, 13. Yeah, Robin age. Uh, she <laughs> says that she's an orphan. Her name isn't Mickey. Uh, and she is not an orphan. <laughs> she has parents who love her and take care of her. But she likes hanging out in this gym. This is her... This is her Oasis is where she goes to get away. It's her private hideout. Okay. Wait. How does how is she Mickey if she introduces herself as not Mickey? No, no, she is Mickey. Oh. He said it's she's lie. lying. But oh, we're gonna call her he, Mickey for the He rest of calls the her out on you know Mickey. He he internally says those right. are both lies. Like, I I'll see. just let her lie to me. It's I, fine. Okay. She's a kid, whatever. Yeah. So she's a stupid kid, she doesn't know anything. Exactly. So they have the lights, they you know, he they explore the space, uh, you know, they're talking. <laughs> and I mean it. Explore, Explore the, the space. space. Batlin Jack or Jack the Devil Murdoch. Uh, his prize fighting poster is up on the wall. Mm. He explains to her who she, who he is and where he comes from and who his dad was. He says, like, that's my dad up there? Yeah. Well, he's, she explains that there's a poster. And he like says, oh, that's my dad. My dad was called the Devil. And they're like, really? They called him the Devil? I'm the Devil! Oh, yeah. <laughs> So Matt goes to a deli and he orders a sandwich and he hears another guy ordering a sandwich and it's so specific he knows it's Foggy Nelson. So the two of them have sandwiches together. Yeah, what? he bumps into Foggy, coincidentally. Is it like his favorite diner from when he was in college with Foggy? No, Matt just wants lunch and they go to the sandwich place. Oh, pastrami on white. God yes. damn it. Oh, I'm sorry, a, a, mayonnaise. a pastrami Reuben on white. Yeah, which they call a damn crime. And they're right. <laughs> so they're talking and... and Foggy got into actual, like, helping people law. You know, he's like... Oh, uh, the he, kind of law that doesn't pay. He's Yeah, that's right. He's in, like, a class action lawsuit against a slumlord. Mm. And he's like, honestly, you know, Matt... His, not his name is Hawkeye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He had, just has a building. He thinks it's his. It's not. Right? He's, he's not really taking care of it. Russian crime lords. It's uh, crazy. But he's like, hey, listen, like, you're in town. You have a minute? Because you were always a better lawyer than me. Like, could I get your... <laughs> and Matt leaps at the chance. The two of them are like... Burn of the Midnight Oil. They come up with this like, like, obscure case that helps them. Mm -hmm. And Matt's like, this is this is lawyering. Like, this is fun. Like, fuck right. that, Does fuck he that need fun. to go home and right. quit first? No, they'll fire him. It happens later. <laughs> but he's like, this is why I became an attorney in the first place. Right. I mentioned, like, gambling, prostitution, and, like, drugs. Uh, also, child trafficking is one of the Kingpin's uh, vices. Like, yeah. They are straight up into child trafficking. They steal homeless children and they ship them out wow and i'm like yeah also fuck <laughs> 93 damn yeah so we link the child trafficking in with child pornography because why not <laughs> and uh you know kingpin's like we need to cut costs on that we got to bring it down because there's no special effects in the film industry when it comes to this kind of movie <laughs> we're making. right and we so need those. uh you know so yeesh so clay sends these two junkies clay's just who cares he's a character with a name uh, but clay sends these junkies to go collect a girl who has to be no older than 12. And so these two junkies who work for Clay, who works for the Kingpin, see Mickey sneaking into the old gym. And so they're like, okay, that's the one. Mm. So It's they, a kid, alone, there we go. Done, yeah. we worked really hard on this. So <laughs> they get the chloroform and they wait for her and then they see her walking by an alley and they bring her in and they knock her out. Matt goes to his hotel room. He's talking to Foggy. He's like, I gotta go. I gotta go back to work. 
like, I, I've already extended my stay too long. But uh, anyway, so he, he gets in the cab. He's going to go to the airport. But he's like, you know what? I want to say goodbye to Mickey. So he asks the cabbie to stop. He gets out and he finds Mickey's lucky red cap. He doesn't know what's red. But uh, he finds her lucky cap and he knows that, like, you know, she never is separated from this cap. And she, like, loves this cap so much that she wrote her address on the inside of the cap on, like, a, you know, piece of plastic yeah, or whatever. Yeah, in case this hat ever gets lost, return to this address yeah, so she, I can like, keep it. And she wrote it with such, like, you know, indentation. He can feel the uh, the, 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 the words. Sure. He does, you know, Matt Murdock, it's established in the comics, firmly established, that he reads the newspaper by running his fingers Right, he across. can feel the height of the ink. That's right. Yeah, that's how sensitive his, his powers yeah. are. Uh, so him feeling the, like, jagged lettering of, like, a, of a 12-year-old or 14-year-old, as it turns out, girl, mm -hmm. yeah. I buy it. But, uh, so she's being held by the junkies, uh, but they call Clay to sell her, but Silvio has a better idea because they're run out of, they've run out of junk and they want to make money fast, faster than uh, Clay can pay because Clay also is like, well, she's 14, I'm only going to pay half. You know, it's like, not enough. <laughs> you know, he's going he's gonna to short them. Mm -hmm. on this child trafficking. So Silvio comes up with an idea. He's going to ransom the girl to her parents. I and mean, that's just good business. Uh, that's, that's, that's an entrepreneur waiting to happen. So Silvio calls Mickey's parents. They immediately take the bait and they're down. Uh, they get the call. Matt hears the call because he's standing outside of mm. their apartment listening in. Um, oh, because he had their address. Yes, so right. he went there first. I love there's a moment that I skipped over where uh, when he's at the gym with Mickey, he muses about the idea that maybe that old billy club is still in that locker. <laughs> but there's no way. So he is going to uh, go and rescue Mickey from these captors. And so he goes to the gym. He breaks over the locker. He grabs the billy club. <laughs> it's still there. It's still there. Uh, and uh, so Silvio's junkie partner rats Silvio out to Clay. <laughs> Nice. For a fix, because no they're both junkies. Thieves. No, yeah. well, it, or so, child traffickers. That's right, and junkies. To, and, to boot, and junkies. They, they're both going through withdrawals. They both want to be high. Uh. So she rats out Silvio to Clay to get more junk now, uh, while Silvio facilitates this like this kidnapping scheme. Right. Uh, so Kingpin is like, everyone in this situation fucked up. <laughs> make it public. Make it a statement. Everyone pays for this. Like Clay, Silvio, that Jeez. woman, everybody. So Oof. Clay goes to his car, he gets into it, it explodes. Uh, Kingpin blows this guy up because... Clay picked the wrong fucking people. <laughs> well, not only that, but like, they betrayed him, which means they betrayed Kingpin. That's right. Gotta send a message. Right. Don't fuck with me. <laughs> so, oh, and now that there's this loose end of this girl, uh, Larks, you can have her. Do whatever you want with her. Oh, the middle... Yeah, the, his, his enforcer. Like yeah, his the blonde guy. guy. Yeah. Lux is like, what the fuck? What am I going to do with a kid? With a, with a child? Like, I'm not a, I'm not a pervert. <laughs> Wait. I can become the professional. <laughs> I can <laughs> have a trainer. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Silvio sends Mickey's father on like a goose hunt. Like, just sending him from, from phone booth to phone booth, trying to chase any tail that might be following him. Okay. But also like exhausting him so he'll be more inclined to just like give up and not fight back or do anything. Mm. So finally, and, and Matt's been chasing the father the entire time. Finally, you know, Mickey's father like gives all of their, any money they've ever had into a thing, puts it into a garbage can and leaves. So Celia takes the money and he's like, oh my God, I can't believe that worked. I'm a genius. <laughs> so I don't have to get the girl back. We can sell the girl to the kingpin. Sweet. So Celia goes <laughs> back to his apartment or the safe house. And uh, he is immediately assassinated. Like, he, he opens the door and a bullet flies through his forehead. Jeez. Matt's there, <laughs> like, under, like under the stairwell, and he's covered in blood. <laughs> and Lark comes through the door, but Matt gags on the blood, and so he breaks his silence, and so Lark hears Matt. Oh, shit. And so he fires at Matt, and Matt barely escapes, and then uh, Lark explains to Kingpin that, like, there was somebody there. And it wasn't, I don't think it was a cop because they moved too quick. Like, they were too good at their job. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and Kingpin's like, oh, jeez, vigilantes, okay. Doesn't go like, no, man, maybe it was Spider-Man. Like, there's nothing like that. <laughs> right, right. But nor does he think it might be some, like, rival no. or special ops or something. He's like, yeah, no, yeah. it's one of those costume people. Yeah. Well, because no one would he care say about a kid. People. He just says vigilantes. Vigilantes, yeah. But yeah, that's... that's true. Like, the cops, like, what are they, what are they doing? Why, why would they care? I, I own most of the cops, he says. Mm. Too many police are on my payroll. To provide such a surprise. Right. Yeah, so, but it could be um, 
you know, international oh, spy be, type shit. Yeah, that's true. It could be a CIA. Yeah. Or something. So Mickey is brought to like the docks where they keep the children, so they can. Oh no, there's a lot of them. Oh yeah. Oh Jesus. Oh no. It's and a whole operation. Mickey knows that Matt can hear from far distances, and so she's been like making noise the entire time while she's been traveling, mm. and that's actually been helping out with Matt. Uh, who has now donned a new outfit. This outfit is the outfit you would see in the beginning of the Daredevil show. Oh, right. yeah. It's just head-to-toe black and yeah. some white sneakers. Uh, and, like, the mask that, like, covers, covers down his to his nose. Uh-huh. Yeah. Matt has trailed Larks. Mickey starts to sing, and they all start singing. And they're just making this, like, song. And, like, one of the, one of the like, enforcers is like, this is getting weird. <laughs> and they're like, they're just building their courage. They're going to need it. And Larks is like, hey, I like the fact that you're getting them to sing. That's kind of fun. And I was like, yep, no problem. That was my idea. I got them to sing. Yeah, totally, like, yeah. It's like, what? So uh, Again, uh, like, Hunt for Red October. Oh, yeah. Let them sing. Let them sing. So what Matt What the kiss? <laughs> so Matt kicks the shit out of these guys. He's just... Th- there's a moment where, like, he takes out two guards. There's one guard that's listening to music. Stick always said no music. Mm. Because if you listen to music, there's no telling what you'll miss. And so when the dude turns around, he sees that all the guards on the roof are taken out, and Matt's just waiting for him. And he throws the billy club at the dude's face. He kills these people. He takes down two dudes. One's fat, the other one's strong. Uh, the One guy, his lungs fill with water, and his heart dies. And then another guy pulls out a knife, and he goes, there's no choice. Give it back to him. Huh. Like, so he's, so, he's yep, just He's just killing rails. people. Yeah. Uh, These are bad people. I mean, though. they're 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 child traffickers. It's like they're not even people. It's okay. So Matt <laughs> takes uh, what the other guy had grenades on him. So he takes all the grenades and he. Why would you have a bag of grenades? I well, don't he's know. the grenade guy. So he could blow up the dock, and then get everyone's attention. They're like, oh shit, it's a raid. Like everyone fan out. It's they, a raid. Yeah, the cops usually blow up. Well, it's a sound. <laughs> I just heard an explosion right, from outside. Right. It could be anything. <laughs> uh, so they they pour out, and Matt just dives into the action. Nice. I'd love it if one of them just. Damn it, that's Johnson! I told him not to bring those grenades! I know. <laughs> uh, Alright. Or immediately likes doing Is it this. worthwhile? I think it's, I mean... It's, I mean, it's cool you get the... You get a much more like, widescreen. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Romina Jr. likes to do this. And, uh, you know, whatever. So <laughs> They're all taken out. And then a truck blasts through an unseen garage door. And... Uh, chases after him there's dudes in the truck they fire like machine guns at him but he's like mm-hmm. I, got, I can't lose track of Mickey right. Larks knows that this dude is chasing after Mickey because it's all related to this whole thing right Larks takes Mickey yeah no one ever attacked us before we took this girl yeah that's true so Larks and Mickey go on foot Matt uh, chases after them and then Matt gets picked up by the cops okay oh I should also point out that uh, when they recovered Mickey she was dressed like like a you know like a tomboy kid from the city they put her in a little pink dress ugh Gross. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so she's calling for Matt, and Larks is just like, shut up. I love the full page of her yelling Matt. But that, that final scream of Matt travels so far and loud that Matt picks up on it in the back of the squad car. He's like, okay. <laughs> I, got, I got to do something about this. I got to so get he, out of the like, squad he car. Gets, you know, he gets the, the cuffs in front of him, and then he kicks the cage into the cops, uh, the back of their heads. Matt has the cops crash conveniently nearby where Larks and Mickey must be running. Mm-hmm. And uh, Larks kills a cabbie and steals his car. Matt gets into the squad car. He's like, here we go. <laughs> Hopefully my radar sense will help me with this. Uh, I've never done this before. <laughs> yep. So Larks is driving and he gets T-boned by the police car. Nice. <laughs> Meanwhile, Matt's like, oh, God, I'm a terrible yeah. driver. Oh, no, oh, who did I kill? <laughs> oh, thank goodness. Oh, thank God it's just Larks and Mickey. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> Woo, that was convenient. So they duck into a like storefront building. Matt walks to the door. Everybody's enveloped in shadows. Let her go. I don't want to kill you. Let her go. Huh. And uh, Lark's like yelling at him and he's like, back off. I've got, I'm the one with the gun. I'll kill you. And he goes, let her go. I don't want to kill you. Let her go. <laughs> Why would he not want to kill him? He killed all those other people. Yeah, but I, I didn't want to kill them. Oh, I see. I mean, I did have a pretty good time killing them. I don't, he wasn't like smiling and laughing. Yeah, it was That's just Electra. We don't know he wasn't. We smiling. know because he's not that kind of person. Uh, so Larks fires at him and like you know he takes one in the in the arm, and then uh, Larks fires and Matt cracks the billy club and it ricochets the bullet. <laughs> and he goes, "Damn, who the devil are you?" And he goes, "Call me Daredevil." So he goes, "Daredevil, sure, whatever. You're dead, Daredevil. Here we go." <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, please, I'm begging you. I don't want to kill you. Let her go. And he fires, 
and Matt cracks the bullet back at him and kills him by shooting him between the eyes. I did not know that Daredevil could do that. And neither did I. <laughs> I didn't know belly clubs were that resilient to bullets. Oh yeah, no they are. Big time. Oh, they, they aren't anymore. You know, they back in they the day. They used to be, uh, when they were made of wood. Yeah. Well, it, it, was, it was, yeah. Like really hard wood. It was, yeah. You know, we're not talking this like, uh, you know. This new cheap wood that they use, yeah, or the no, no, no. polycarbonate rods that they have right? now. Right, no, 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 this is some serious wood. <laughs> I mean, oh, this is good old American hickory. <laughs> <laughs> so by the, cops, by the time the cops arrive, Matt's gone, but they do hear the mystery about this daredevil that came mm. and like broke up this entire, oh. and it fucks up everything. Hey, like, how did they learn the name Daredevil? Lorx is dead. Yeah, but you know. Daredevil carved his name well, into he his yelled, forehead. He, he, uh, he, he took the blood from Lorx and, and he wrote, wrote Daredevil, Daredevil on the wall. wall. He learned one thing there, from but like, like, you know, He says Daredevil enough. He, it, it comes Other people up. overheard someone say Daredevil maybe at yeah. some point during this process. Maybe Elektra did it. She it was, came in afterwards and drew yeah. it on with blood. I think it was Mickey. I think Mickey told people that Daredevil saved her. Ah. Uh. That makes but, sense. Because uh, I can't tell them Matt saved me. He'll be in trouble. That's right. Uh, I, I love the description of like how this fucks up Kingpin's business. You know, he's just like, one man shattered an operation that was the work of years. I lost like lieutenants. I lost people. Like I lost business. Millions were spent to, to give something to the cops. Yes, yeah, to right. quiet this. Yeah. yeah. Like, but eventually they'll get their headlines and things will get back into business. But like, I've lost money and it was all one person. And this daredevil, why does he worry me so? Hmm. Uh oh, you have no idea. <laughs> so uh, Matt is just standing in the rain, like on a precipice, like thinking about the conversation he had with his boss, who was just like, "You're fired. <laughs> you didn't. You didn't get on the plane. You didn't get here. What are you doing?" It's like Boston. <laughs> Matt couldn't leave New York if he wanted to. <laughs> I mean, aside from those times, he left New York. But well, now he's never not, not for real though. Yeah. yeah. Foggy and Matt are back at their classic deli where they get ruined Reuben sandwiches and they're talking about their future and like in the comic book, they're like, we're going to start our law firm. Uh, my dad's going to get us a place. Not too fancy, you know, just a little, little place to, to set up our shop. Uh, but the only question now remains, is it going to be called Murdoch and Nelson or Nelson and Murdoch? And Matt's like, why don't you flip a coin, Foggy? So Foggy flips the coin and he fucks it up, but it like bounces down the, 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 the counter mm -hmm. and it is caught by stick. Huh. And Stick takes it, finishes his drink, and he goes, watch your back, kid. By the way, it came up tails. So you come in second, don't get cocky. He hands <laughs> it back to him. So it's going to be Nelson and Murdoch. Uh, so then we see that, like, Daredevil's been established, and Daredevil is, like, going to... By the way, Stick lied. Yeah. It's like, it would have been heads. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I, can't, I can't actually But I see. can't let you have one over on anything. Like, right. I can't let you have a victory. Right. Never. You're never allowed to have it. That's right. So Matt like takes the name Daredevil that he hated as a child and he wears mm. it like a badge now and he puts right. it on. He's like, I'll let all the bullies know that like there's somebody named Daredevil out there like waiting to beat the living shit out of them with a billy club. <laughs> uh, the costume's a good idea. I sewed it myself. God knows what it looks like. <laughs> and it's this gorgeous double page splash of what it always should look like. Mm. Uh, we see this kind of like homage to the yellow suit, yeah. but uh, we still colored it red. And uh, we see like him transition from the costume that he started with to, to what he's one. wearing right now in 1993. Right, which is awesome. Yeah, which is timeless and classic and will never be outdone. Uh, although I will say that the current run has a really damn good costume and I like Elektra as Daredevil and she looks really cool. So, uh, you know, and, and in this collection, and I don't know which one is in the comments down below for you to buy it, but like it has stuff like Frank Miller's 1988 Blind Justice original graphic novel pitch. What, uh, whatever happens with Mickey? Nothing. Oh, wow. They've never used Mickey, and that's the other thing that I think they're going to carry over we're going to see a payoff. I oh. think Mickey's a character that's like, she's the Carrie Kelly of this book. Mm. <laughs> uh, although she is a victim, unfortunately. Yeah, she doesn't succeed at doing much of anything. But... No, it's true. But uh, She's kind of like she's... Gordon's kids. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, I also love this story because I remember reading an interview with then writer of Daredevil at the time, D.G. Chichester, who wrote uh, Daredevil Fall from Grace and other thoroughly unremarkable Daredevil stories. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, he also wrote, uh, I think, one of the Daredevil Batman crossovers. I believe it's the Marvel one. Mm. All uh, right. I'm not a big D.G. Chichester fan, but I know that he was very offended by the publishing of this book. Really? And the promotional materials that Marvel put into this book, where they were like, there's a poster that I'll never forget. It's called, It's Miller Time. 
<laughs> as if to say, we're bringing him back, baby. Or drink up, kids. Right. <laughs> At least they didn't go the DC route and go, Miller is coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they didn't. But this, the, the funny thing is, this, this reads like a DC book to me. This is the most like Batman Daredevil ever is. But it's also well, it's quintessentially gritty. Daredevil. It's, it's yeah. Frank. It's Frank and John Romita Jr. just like channeling classic Frank. Yeah. And like this book does not feel or read like a book from 1993. This doesn't no. even feel like a Marvel book. This no. is just like a gritty crime story. Yeah. It's no doubt why they used it for the show. They're like, we're yeah. trying to make something that's like a little more hard edge, a little more like you know, contemporary, more for Netflix audience, and uh, yeah, it works. It works damn well as an adaptation. I think it's a solid, incredible piece of uh, art. I think it's a terrific Daredevil work, but that's the thing, is like every, if you are writing Daredevil, you're probably gonna write like a remembered and celebrated run on Daredevil. There's so few. There's more uh, great Daredevil runs than there are unremarkable ones. Uh, and and I, I like to count like Daredevil during the 90s as like one run, we're just not gonna talk about. Mm-hmm. You know, like that. I, yeah, it's just all kind of blends. Together. I get you. You know, I, I get Chichester being like, man, like I'm, I'm doing things with Daredevil. You know, I'm the writer on Daredevil, mm-hmm. and then you go and you're telling everybody Frank Miller's coming in for some other Daredevil book in which he doesn't even appear. Uh, you know, how does it make me feel? It's like, well, maybe you better step it up because yeah. this was great. <laughs> and the best thing about Daredevil: Fall from Grace are the covers. Sorry. There you have it, uh, Daredevil, Man Without Fear, totally dope. Uh, if you do read it now, you're probably gonna be like, if you watch the show, you're gonna be like, oh, this is the show. <laughs> Which is why it was great. And that's why it was great, now you know why, so read it again and enjoy it and divorce yourself from the show. At least Mickey wasn't in the show. Uh, but we'll see you guys next time with another episode of Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Keep reading. You know, I will say, in the scene where he's hitting the bullets, the bullet, it does, the, the bullets do disintegrate his, his, uh, his, his ability. Oh, okay, yeah. cool.